Hi, my name is Carl and I've been asked by the Epic Project to do another photography tutorial and today we're looking at close-up photography and macro. So close-up photography is where the image you're taking a photo of appears to be a quarter to half size of life size on the actual sensor. Macro photography is where the image you're taking appears to be life size or even greater, so ratio of one to one or one to three. And micro photography is where we go even larger, where the image on the sensor appears to be three times to five times or even bigger on the sensor. At macro photography, we get to see some incredible detail of the image we're taking that you probably won't even be able to see with your eye. Now, forgive me for being indoors today, whereas most of your photography that you're going to be doing, I'm sure will be outside. And in this lockdown time, what I thought I'd do best would be demonstrate for you in my own home, then we can uh, really utilize all the gear that I've got on the table here. And I'll be taking particularly pictures of flowers to demonstrate what you can do in your own homes, your own gardens, and out there in the real world when things get back to normal. So the start of most of this tutorial is actually going to be using smartphones because everybody's got one. Not everyone has got sophisticated cameras with expensive macro lenses and all the other gear. But what I'm going to do is just run through some of the gear I've got here, which if you don't have, you can pretty much adapt things you may well have lying around at home. So let's start with the gear, your smartphone. Most smartphones have just a native camera, which is probably the best camera for you to use for any close up photography. Don't waste money on apps which have a macro feature. All that app does when you put it on a macro feature is just zoom in for you. Whereas you can simply do the zooming in by just usually spreading your fingers out or pinching down to zoom in and out for your photo. So here I have my smartphone. It's an iPhone 7 Plus, doesn't mean anything. It's just the phone I'm using. I've also got another iPhone here, which as you can see is in a very small little tripod with multiple brackets so you can kind of bend and move the camera around the subject that you're taking. I also recommend when you're using a camera in a tripod to plug in your headphones and simply use the plus, uh, the volume button on your headphones to take the photo. Then there's no touching and movement unnecessarily in the camera. You can just use it remotely. Other things that are good to have at hand are some torches to add light. Because we're getting so close into the subject, sometimes the best angle, we might put a shadow over our subject. So it's great to be able to bring in bright lights to our subject to illuminate them. And I'll explain another reason why that adds better image quality a little later on. Another thing that can be really helpful is what we call kind of a third hand. And here we just have a clamp, which you can then lay on the ground, put the stem of a flower in, and that's gonna just keep it nice and steady because believe me, the amount of times we miss shots because the wind is just blowing a flower in and out of focus and you go to press the button, take the shot, and you know the wind has just moved at that fraction and it's a waste of a shot. Other things that are quite helpful is when we're taking pictures of insects and when like I've got a little spider in here, they like to run around. So sometimes it's good to have a Tupperware box, put some water in it, put a stone inside the water and then place the insect on the stone. And then you've got such a small area that you can kind of focus your attention on to capture the insect uh, without it running away. Other things that I've got close at hand is just a variety of color card. And because we're working so close to our subject, it's easy just to have a small piece of card that you can put behind it to give it a different color background. Sometimes we have things in the background that just really distract away from the attention and detail that we're capturing so close up. So to be able to put a different color card behind that can really add an impact to our photo. The other things that we could be using, although today I'm gonna to be focusing on flowers that we've got here, lovely orchids and others, but when you're at home on a rainy day and you get into macro, then just raid your cutlery drawer. You can get some forks and just kind of cross the, the tips of the fork and just play around with getting some amazing macro images that way. Something that I always recommend to have on hand as well when we're using smartphones or even uh, other types of cameras, is just a lens wipe. It's quite surprising if you look at the back of your smartphone just how 
many smears or little bits of dust are on your lens. And as we're working with such fine details and close up, those little bits of dust actually appear a lot bigger and ruin any image. So these are just glasses, uh, lens wipes, and also just a lens cloth. And it's always good to get into good habits of cleaning our lenses regularly. Some other things that we can have at our disposal is adapter lenses. Now this is a large one that we'd put on my DSLR, but you can actually buy macro lenses that will clip on your smartphone. They literally have a little clip and you can just open up and it will just then lay over your native camera lens on your phone and then give you a bit of macro. I've used those to varying success if I'm really honest and I prefer just to zoom in um, using the camera on my phone and on this one it's got quite an impressive uh, 10 times zoom which for macro photography well more close-up photography you do get a pretty good image on these smartphones. Some of you may be trying to use a compact camera which like this has a 14 times zoom. Sometimes you'll find that with a lot of cameras that don't have a macro feature, you simply cannot stand close enough to your subject. So for me using this camera, I'd actually have to stand about a meter and a half away from my subject to be able to use the full zoom and it wouldn't get me as close uh, to macro at one to one. It would probably still be around the, the normal photography mode and have something appearing quite small on the sensor. So I would need some adaptions to go on this to give it that macro look. So one of the most annoying things with macro and close-up photography is that every little movement just has a massive effect on how you're viewing your subject. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate some simple tips that is going to give you the best chance of keeping nice and steady when trying to take those photos. Now, a lot of my macro photography when I'm out, say in the garden or in the wild, is pretty much prostrate lying on the floor and I have a black plastic bag underneath me. I'm actually allergic to grass and I kind of get quite a bad uh, itches on my arm, so I always have something underneath me. But to keep the camera steady, there's no point just trying to hold it at 10 times zoom and using the center button. What I do is make sure I'm holding the camera with two hands. So it might be that I would hold it this way around. And then I would use the volume buttons on the side of my camera by pressing up with a little pinch, keeping everything nice and steady. If I'm using it this way and I tap, I'm moving the screen, little movement, as you'll soon find out, um, can make a massive difference. So for demonstration, I would have my elbows anchored on the floor. That's already given me stability, so I can move my whole top body. It's not going to be affecting the movement of the camera. And then holding it with two hands, and then slow your breathing down because even breathing you get excited when you see a bug or something you really want to capture slow your breathing down make sure that your camera is in the right place and then simply just press the volume button so what i recommend when you're going to take your photo is not trust the autofocus on the camera because when you're out in the wind the flowers probably blowing around and you can just see that even standing right here, trying to be still, there's still a lot of movement. So what I recommend is that you focus lock your camera by pressing and holding the screen. And you can see there it says the exposure is locked and the focus is locked. And then just move your camera in and out until it finds that focus point that's locked on and then take your picture. Now what I would do is introduce some more lighting. I'm indoors, so there's no real highlights and shadows. And if you've got an overcast day, it'd be exactly the same. So adding lighting like this, maybe more from the side, is gonna really introduce some highlights and some shadows. And that really brings out texture and detail in your image. So I'm gonna just retake the picture. Now I've added light, I've still got the old exposure lock on and it's showing me it's too bright. So I'm going to redo the exposure and focus lock and then hold it in place, move my light around until I see something that I really like and then I'm going to retake the photo. Right, well, let's take some photos of these lovely flowers we have here. I'm going to start with the orchids. 
this is going to be holding it freehand, just like we would do if we're on a lovely country walk and we see something that takes our interest. So we're getting our camera up to full magnification zoom in, getting it in our two hands, and then looking through the camera and just moving around to get a different perspective and see the perspective that really captures your interest and then take the photo. And I always recommend kind of taking about three photos and then having a good look. Replay them, view them and see what you really like, what you don't like. Make sure that they are in focus and just have great fun playing around. And here we are again with the orchids and I've got my little iPhone 5 here in a little tripod and bracket and I've got it positioned up. And now the great thing is this is not moving, the camera's not moving, and I can now just press the volume button on the headphones and then take the photo. One of the better ways of working, instead of now moving the camera every time, is I can now just move the flower in and out and rotate it around to get a different perspective. What I'm noticing as I do that is there's a little bit of light coming in from the window to my left, your right. So that's had a bit of an impact as well. So the great thing is we can just move both of these to get a variety of shots. And then again, just take the picture. No movement, everything's really still. Sharp focus, lovely detail. So hopefully there you got to see some of the details we can get with these kind of cameras with macro or close up photography. Now I'm just going to have a little go at the insect photography. Went out in the garden just a few moments ago and found, sadly, the tiniest of spiders, I think, in the garden. I've just measured it against sort of the uh, ruler here and he's about two to three millimetres, so very, very small. But like I say, what I've got is a Tupperware box here, placed a stone inside the Tupperware box, put a little bit of water around and the spider goes to the edge of the stone, feels around and then comes back to the stone. And then the same thing applies with the anchor points of elbows, getting in nice and close, zooming into 10 times zoom and finding the spider. Now, because the spider is so small and when you've got it zoomed in 10 times, you could be hunting around for ages and because it won't be in focus, you probably will never find it. So again, one of the best ways is to kind of zoom out. Now I can see the whole of the stone very clearly. I can see where the spider is and then I can just gradually zoom into my 10 times zoom and all the time I've kept the spider right in the center of the picture. I can now get my two hands, thumb on the button and now I'm going to take the shot. And believe it or not, that little two millimeter spider is quite big and large on the center of the screen. Well, I hope those tips are gonna help you to get some really good close up and macro photography. I wanna set you a few challenges. I want you to find a flower, maybe a dandelion, especially one that's about to seed, and get in nice and close and practice some of those tips um, to get a really good shot of a flower. Another thing I want you to try and do is to get a leaf and backlight it, and we're going to demonstrate that now. So follow me over to the window, and what we're going to do is backlight this leaf. And as soon as you do that, you can see the light flooding in. Then we can get our camera on 10 times zoom and just really position it and capture a lovely photo. Turn it around and do exactly the same, and you'll find that you'll get a different kind of overall image. And then the third thing I want you to do, get flowers, get leaves, and the third thing I want you to do is to find things around the house that you can practice on. So again, I'm going to use these forks. I really like it when I kind of interlock the, the ends of the forks. And then either using a smartphone or your macro uh, camera, get in nice and close, zoom in, follow it around till you see something you think really looks quite unusual, and then take your photo.
These following images were the ones that were taken during today's tutorial. They're both a mixture of shots taken with the iPhone and the digital SLR camera. You might be able to tell which ones are which. But what I really hope is this has given you a few ideas of how you can capture similar sort of shots or even better shots from your times in your garden or when you're able to go out and about amongst nature. The good thing about smartphones is they're small and we always have them on us and the image quality is just getting better and better. So get your cameras, get your subjects, start zooming in, take some great shots, post them onto the Facebook website in the link below and in a short time Alistair and I will be giving some feedback on your images. I'm really looking forward to seeing what images you capture and I'll now leave you with my favourite macro shot I've ever taken which was this one of this ant last week. So until next time stay safe and stay well.